Hi, Matt Allington here, and today I'm going to talk about a problem which I call employees by period. Now, I've had a number of clients over the years that have asked me to solve a problem very similar to this. Each time I go to solve the problem, I have to go right back to scratch and get my head around how to solve this problem. I know conceptually what to do, but each time the DAX is quite difficult. And so I always go back to first principles and try and step my way through the problem. So what I thought I'd do today is I would share the process that I use to solve this problem, make a video of it, and also document the exact way to solve the problem so that I can use it later when I need it again, but also so you can learn from my experience. So let's jump over, I'll show you some data and I'll show you how to solve this problem. Okay, so here I have some sample data. Now, when I'm trying to solve problems or I'm trying to get my head around a particular problem, I always make sure I've got good representative sample data. And I also try and keep the set of sample data relatively small so that I can check and validate that what I'm doing is correct. But it is super important that you have a representative set of sample data, which I'll explain a little bit more in a moment. So here I have, say, 10 employees, and you can see here they've got a name and an ID. And this employee started on the 23rd of October, international date format, 2017. And this person hasn't departed from the company yet, so they're still employed. But this person here started on the 12th of June, 2018, and they departed on the 16th of January, 2022, and so on. And so the objective is that I want to be able to understand for any given year, let's say 2019, during the year 2019, how many total employees did I have? What was the total number of unique employees I had during that year. Now, just to make it a little bit easier to get your head around what I'm talking about, I've produced this small matrix here that shows you the year in which each employee was employed. So if we take um, Aaron here, um, Aaron was employed in 2016, 17 and 18, but not employed during these other years. So if we think about the problem now, let's just take a point in time, let's say 2019. If I want to know how many employees, how many unique employees I had at any time during 2019, I would come in here and I could just put a filter, I could use filter by color, and I actually have four employees during 2019. So let me clear that filter, I'll go ahead and load the data up into Power BI, and then I'll show you one of the problems that we have in trying to solve this particular type of calculation. Okay, so here I am in Power BI and I've got my two tables of data loaded. I've got my calendar table. You'll always need a calendar table if you're trying to do this type of calculation. And my calendar table is a superset of all the dates that matter within this set of data. So it starts from, let's jump over here, it starts from the 1st of January 2016, which is the first year in which I had an employee, and it goes through until the end of the last year in which I'm doing my analysis, which is December 2021. I also have my employees table, so if I jump over to the employees table, you'll notice I've got the started date, the departed date, and the name of the employee. Now here's the issue with this type of DAX problem. If I try and join my commenced date, to my calendar date. Now in this case, it's creating a one-to-one -one relationship because I don't have any repeated dates in my employees table. But the calendar table is a dimension table and the employees table is a fact table in this case. Now if I come up and try to work out how many employees I had in each year, I could bring say the year, the calendar year into my visual. This is a table. And if I bring a total employees measure, so the total employees, I've just got to count rows of the employees table. If I bring that in, I don't get the number of employees during that year. What I get is the number of employees that commenced during that year. So in 2019, in fact, I didn't have any employees commencing. And so these relationships that you put between a dimension table and a fact table are designed to pass the filter from one table to the other table. They're not designed to filter a from range and a to range. If I tried to create a second relationship here between the departed date and the date, it would create an inactive relationship and I would basically get no results returned. So in this case, a relationship is not the way to solve the problem. 
and I'm going to delete that relationship. Okay, so to explain how to solve the problem, first of all, I'm going to go back to my Excel sample data, show you how to apply the filters, and then we'll come back and solve the problem using DAX. Okay, so here I am back in Excel with my sample data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some filters on these two columns of my data so that only the employees that were employed during the year of 2019 are retained in this table. So let's take this particular employee. You can see that this employee started after the end of 2019. They didn't start till 2021. And so there's two dates that I'm going to take into account here. First of all, the first date in 2019 was the 1st of January 2019. And of course, the last date in 2019 was the 31st of December 2019. And so in order to be kept, in order for me to keep the employee, they had to have commenced work before the last day in 2019. If they hadn't started work by the 31st of December 2019, I don't want to see them. So I can go ahead and put a filter and I can say that they had to have commenced date filter before. And I'm going to hard code the solution. So is before equal to the 31st of December 2019. In other words, only keep the employees that had commenced work before the end of 2019. And so when I do that, I've now reduced the list. Now, you can see that there's still a problem because I've got some employees here, like this employee here, actually left the company before the start of 2019. So I only want to keep them if they haven't left the company before the start of 2019. So I can go ahead and say if their departed date is after and I'll change it to after or equal to the 1st of January 2019. So only keep the people that departed after 1st of January 2019. And that now reduces my list to just these employees that were employed during 2019. But there's one more problem. I don't know if you noticed, but there was actually an employee who has not departed the company yet at all. So if I undo this, you'll see that this person is still employed. They don't have a departed date. And so if I go back and reapply that filter, I also need to keep anyone that has not yet departed. So anyone that has a blank. And so when I make that change, then I've got the full four people that were employed during 2019. Of course, I've hard coded these particular filters in this case, but that's for demonstration purposes. So now that I've worked out the logic of the filters that I have to apply, I now need to adapt that to the DAX language. So let me jump back over to Power BI Desktop and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so here I am back in Power BI with my data that I've loaded. And as I just showed you in Excel, what I need to be able to do is put a filter on both of these columns so that I keep only the employees that were employed during a given period. 2019 was the period that I used in my demo. And as a reminder, I don't have any relationships because relationships are not going to help us in this case. What I actually need to do is I need to be able to pass a filter from the calendar table and push that filter on to both of these columns independently. And so in this case, I'm going to solve that problem using DAX. So if I jump back over here, I've got the actual filters that I applied here in Excel on the screen, just to make it easier for me to remember how to do that. And I have a table. This is the calendar year coming from the calendar table. And if I get my measure, total employees, which is just the count rows of the employees column, and place that in this table, of course, I'm going to get the same number 10, which is the total of all employees in the table, because currently there are no filters from the calendar table to the employee table. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use DAX to determine what filters I need to apply and to push those filters onto the employee table without any relationships at all. So let me step you through the way I'm going to solve that problem. So let's take this one here. So here I have the last day in the calendar year 2019. So I need to be able to sense 
the last day in the calendar year. I don't want to hard code that because of course that will only work for the year 2019. I want it to work for any year that I select. So one of the pieces of the puzzle that I need is to be able to harvest the last day with the current filter applied. So for now, I'm just going to comment out my code and I'm going to define a variable and this will be the last day in period. And technically it's the last date in period. And I can just use a simple formula max of the calendar date. And just to test that that's working, I'll, I'll return the last date in the period. And so once I do that, you can see that my measure has updated, telling me that this part of the formula is correctly sensing the last date in the period that's been applied. Now I've got year here, but of course, if I brought month in, I could bring say month name in as well. And if I drill down on this, or in fact, I don't need to drill down, you can see that it will actually work for any period that's been selected. I'm just using year for my demonstration. All right, so the other piece of the puzzle I'm going to need is I need to know the first date in the period. And so I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'll just take a copy of this piece of code and I'll put in another variable. Of course, this one is going to be the first date in the period. And instead of the max, I'll do the min. And let's return that. to make sure that it's working correctly. And now I'm getting the first date in the period that's in my filter. And so now I've got these start date and finish dates available within my formula. I'm going to go ahead and apply those as filters onto my table. So to do that, I'll turn this into another variable and the variable this time will be result. And the result will be equals will be calculate because I'm going to manually manipulate the filtering behavior. And I ultimately want to count the rows in the employees table. But before I do that, I need to put some filters and the filters that I need to apply are the ones that I got here. So I need the commenced date. So the employees commenced date has to be less than or equal to the end of the period, which was the last date in period. And in addition, I need the departed date has to be greater than or equal to the first date in the period. So there are the filters. And remember that I also need to filter for blank. And so I'm going to turn this one into an or statement. So it'll be or, or the departed date has to be greater than or equal to the first date in the period, or it has to be blank. So is blank departed. Close the brackets. Once I've got the syntax right, I can return the result. And when I've done that, you can see I've got the correct answer there. The total number of employees in 2019 at any time during 2019 was four.